Based on the Schnuder labeling and the Schnuder realizer that we now know how to compute, we will now show how we can find barycentric coordinates and a barycentric representation of our graph, which then, as we have proven before, is planar. And this will be a so-called Schnuder drawing. For that we need some more properties and definitions. So let's have a look at a single vertex here. We know that every color gives us a tree that's rooted in a vertex on the outer face. So if we walk along the red tree, then we have a path that goes to the vertex A. If we walk along the blue tree, then we get a path that goes to vertex B. And if we walk along the green tree, then we have a path that follows us to vertex C. So we have three directed paths to this outer face. And these paths cannot cross each other. So let's assume, for example, that the blue path crosses the red, and it crosses it in such a way that it comes from this side through it. But how can it even get to this area? To get here, it first has to cross the red from this side, or it has to cross the green from this side. But if we look at the order of all the edges around a vertex, to have such a crossing here, we must have some edge that enters blue and leaves blue, but between entering and leaving, on the right side we have an incoming red edge. But here, on the right side, we only have outcoming red edges, so this is not possible. The same way, if we go from here to here, we go in with blue and leave with blue, and between them, on the right side, we must have an outgoing green, but this also is not possible. So we cannot have this crossing, and we cannot have this crossing. And that means we cannot get to this area, so we also cannot have a crossing like this. So they only cross at V. And with the same argument, of course, we also cannot have a crossing with the green path. These three paths now also give us three regions of this triangulated graph. First, we get the red region, which is spent by the green path, the blue path, and this edge on the outer face. Then we have the blue region here and the green region down here. So basically, we always have the region opposite to the side of the path of its color. We have the red path and then the red region. Blue path, blue region, green path, green region. And these regions are nicely nested. So let's say we pick any other vertex inside the red region. For example, this one here. Then the red region of this vertex is a proper subset of the region of V. If we look at this example here, how does the red region look like here? It's between the green path and the blue path, so it is this part up here. And that means that we have a proper subset. Why is that the case? Well, if we follow the green path from U, it cannot cross this path here, so either it stays completely on this side, or they merge at some point. The same for the blue path. It cannot cross this path down here, so either it stays on the same side or they merge at some point. But since they have different starting vertices, it cannot be exactly the same region. It cannot have anything else because it cannot cross these two paths, so it is a proper subset. Also, if we sum up the size of all these regions, how many faces do we get here? Well, we know that a triangulated planar graph has exactly two n minus four faces. One of those is the outer face. So we have two n minus five interior faces left. And every face is in exactly one of those regions. So the sum of these is two n minus five. I want to briefly note the special case of the outer vertices. For example, if you look at A, then all the faces lie in the region 1, and no faces lie in region 2 or region 3. The same with B, everything lies in region 2, and C, everything lies in region 3. And now these regions are the key for our barycentric coordinates. We just count how many faces do we have here, 
how many do we have here, how many do we have here, divided by 2 and minus 5, and that gives us our barycentric coordinates. So with this mapping, we get a barycentric representation of G, and because it is barycentric, it is also a planar straight line drawing. We of course have to prove the two properties of a barycentric representation. First, for every vertex, these three numbers have to add up to 1. Now we know that these three numbers add up to 2n-5. So if we add them up divided by 2n-5, then we get exactly a 1. Second, we have to prove that for every edge and every other vertex, there is some index such that the number here is larger than both of these. Now, we know that this edge must lie in some region of this vertex. Because if it does not, then this edge has to cross the red path, which is not allowed. And we just proved the property that for all the interior vertices that lie in some region, the region in the same direction gets smaller. So the number here for x and y will also be smaller than the number of z. And this is the second property that we need. And that's everything. Now we have a barycentric representation of g, it is planar at a straight line. We still have to put it onto the grid. But that is quite easy. We just pick these three coordinates. We put a at the origin, b at 2 and minus 5, 0, and c at 0, 2 and minus 5. And now all the coordinates will be integer, because these numbers here are integers. And we divide it by 2 and minus 5, but then multiply it with 2 and minus 5, so we have integer coordinates everywhere here. That means that we get a drawing on the 2n-5 times 2n-5 grid. Let's have a look at an example. We have this graph here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 vertices. And we have 2n-5 is 9 faces. So we put our vertex A at barycentric coordinate 9, 0, 0, B at 0, 9, 0, and C at 0, 0, 9. What about D? Well, we have the green region down here, the red one here, the blue here. Here we have one face, so this is a 1. Here we have two faces, so this is a 2. Here we have six faces, so this is a 6. For E, we have two green, two blue, and five red faces. For G, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 green, two blue, and one red face. And for H, we have four red, one blue, and four green faces. Let's put everything together. We have our vertex A here, B here, and C here. And that's also where we put the small ABC. The first barycentric coordinate tells us how close do we get to A. And this is orthogonal to this direction. So this gives us in which of these diagonals does our vertex lie. The second coordinate tells us how close do we get to B. So it tells us on which of these vertical grid lines do we lie. And the third coordinate tells us how close do we get to C. So it tells us on which of these horizontal grid lines do we lie. So that means that the two-dimensional coordinate of all our vertices is just computed with the blue and the green. And the red one we basically don't even need. So everything lies inside this triangle. We have ABC on the outer face. And we put D at 6, 1, so it is here. We put E at 2, 2, so it is here. We put G at 2, 6, so it goes here. And H at 1, 4, so it goes here. And now we have our planar drawing on the 2n-5 times 2n-5 grid. And in the next part, we want to show how to improve this to n-2 times n-2.